black hand, nothing. Larry, go. Black hand, <laughs> nothing. And although these seem funny and they kind of get us to chuckle, the question is, are, are similar design processes impacting much more consequential technologies that we're not even aware of? So Twitter does offer you options to crop your own image, but if you don't use those, it uses an automatic cropping algorithm. Wow. Whoa. Okay, let's try the other, the happy wow. one. Unbelievable. It's both time. See, these machines and their predictions, they're not separate from us or from our biases or from our history, which we've seen in headline after headline for the past 10 years. We're using the, fa the face tracking software, so it's supposed to follow me as I move. As you can see, I do this, no following. Not really, not really follow me. Wanda, if you would, please. Sure. In 2010, the top hit when you did a search for black girls, 80% of what you found on the first page of results was all porn sites. Google is apologizing after its photo software labeled two African-Americans gorillas. Microsoft is shutting down its new artificial intelligent bot after Twitter users taught it how to be racist. In order to make yourself hotter, the app appeared to lighten your skin tone. Overall, they work better on lighter faces than darker faces, and they worked especially poorly on darker female faces. Okay, so I've noticed that on all, all these damn beauty filters, they keep taking my nose and making it thinner. Give me my African nose back, please. So the first thing that I tried was the prompt was two Muslims. And the way it completed it was two Muslims, one with an apparent bomb, tried to blow up the federal building in Oklahoma City in the mid-1990s. Detroit police wrongfully arrested Robert Williams based on a false facial recognition hit. There's definitely a pattern of harm that disproportionately falls on vulnerable people, people of color. Then there's attention, but of course the damage has already been done. The damage has already been done. And the question is, what are the steps that follow after the destruction of what was standing before that damage, what happens next? A rebuilding of something has to happen next. And the video you just saw was the maintenance of the destruction, the maintenance of that damage. So just as so-called white America doesn't want to address the crimes that led up to the foundation of this nation, these technological systems that have racism interwoven into their algorithms don't want to make public, don't want to make known that these mind controls are enveloped within their systems because then they would have to go into why. So the name of the game is to avoid, distract from, and deflect from the entire reality that's happened at all and sell you something that is of a positive. So in the case of politics or the nation, they sell you the positive of America. They call America, but it's just the United States. The United States being the leader of freedom, being the free nation where everybody comes to be free, to start over, to achieve the American dream. This is where you come to escape the hardships of the world, when as a matter of fact, the majority of the hardships of the world are a result of these first world nations hitting the rest of the world with poverty, with war, with infiltrating their political systems, with destabilizing their nations, with stealing their land and resources, with poisoning their people. So with systems like the mainstream media, they use their deflection tactics and mind control tactics to make you focus on what they want you to focus on, that which is positive, so-called positive, at the expense of truth, at the expense of the reality. And the thing is, at the end of the day, when they've deflected, stolen the time, and focused all the energy on the idea of positivity, 
like the lady was saying, the damage is already done and we just have to move on. So your nation has already been stolen. Your people have already been genocided. So-called white people are the United States of American, America's Americans. They are the people. We just need to move on. This is the idea where New Age-ism and spirituality, the idea of spirituality comes into place because those communities, those mindsets are the foundation of the move on mentality. Technology is the same thing. Technology is more mainstream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your nation was stolen. Your people were killed. But we created NASA with Nazis. We created NASA. We went to the moon. We sent a satellite up in space that could look into the past. A time traveling satellite that could look into the Big Bang. You mean you don't want this? How dare you? How ungrateful of you to not want progress for humanity. What are you, some kind of savage? The vaccine is progress. What are you, some kind of savage? You don't believe in climate change? Oh my God, you must not care about Earth. What kind of person are you? These teams get created with Obviously with the mainstream media, but with Hollywood, which is a part of the mainstream media. So for people who've seen the movie Don't Look Up on Netflix recently, what are the hidden agendas behind that? If you watch the interviews of these actors after they've done the movie, pushing the movie, you'll see what they're pushing. You'll see Jonah Hill specifically even mention legislation in in politics, the Emergency Climate Act. How to fix climate change. Even the number, H.R. 794, in an interview, Jonah Hill mentions this because the main purpose of that movie is to create an atmosphere of the mind. Put these people over here and those people over there. These are the smart, cool ones. They're even making fun of it in there. It's like categorizing people for fun. But it's true. It's like we're the cool, rich ones and you're the... You're the dumb ones who don't, you know, believe in science. Like, wh- what are you? We're, we're the ones with all the money and the intelligence from the university system. Who the hell do you think you are? And in the movie, they put these hidden, hidden messages in there to push the idea of climate change to your subconscious. So they'll put a polar bear with a beach umbrella in the background to push climate change to push that shame, to push that guilt. So when it comes down to it, you support the programs that the system needs you to support. And you've been pre-programmed through Hollywood, through laughter, through joy, through being with your family and watching these movies. Even with kids, they'll put a dinosaur in there, in the background, to trigger the idea of extinction, to trigger that fear in the masses of people. Also programming into the kids and the people to believe in those ridiculous ideas of history, but mostly to trigger that fear. Like I said in the previous video, the fear is what's sold to you to sell in the idea of forward progress, of evolution. Fear climate change. So we can push these programs to get more money for our bank accounts. Fear a comet coming from space to blow up the earth. So we can push these programs to do whatever it is we're going to do with that fear program. Fear these viruses so we can push the vaccine programs. Fear so-called black people so we can push these programs to do whatever it is we want to do to put more control on the masses of people. This is what those algorithms within technology do. It's to trigger people. Because once you're triggered as a so-called black person, once you have all of these systems attacking you under the radar, mind you, if it's under the radar and you react to something that most people don't see, so so so-called white people don't see what we have to deal with every day. They don't see the depths of it. So they only see our reaction to it. So our reaction to it makes us the angry black man, makes our women the, the attitude problem women. Like, no, you're not seeing the entire story. You're seeing through your own goggles. You're seeing only part of the story. And the reaction to that is to fear you as a people. Because if 
you are the ones that they should fear. That relates you more to a savage nature, a less evolved being. And it validates the taking of your land, the controlling of your people, the not even needing to look at the history of your people because you're not human. Stealing your land, killing your people, destroying your relationship with each other, your culture, that doesn't matter because you're not human. So we don't even need to put it in the education system. It's not even worth learning. All of these systems are designed to allow the system to continue on without being held accountable. And the deeper you get invested in the system, so so-called white people are the most deeply invested into these systems of control. This is why I said it's not like, it's not like blaming so-called white people. It's only observing the fact that when you ask yourself what group of people are the most fully invested in the systems that work against the masses of people, it's the people that they have used to control the masses of people psychologically and physically. So-called white people have a vested interest in the system because the system provides a privilege for these people at the expense of the rest of the people not only in the United States, but around the world. And then even when you bring that up, you'll have people saying, well, no, we're all poor. We're all impoverished. I, I grew up in a black neighborhood where I didn't have any food. And you they start to try to level the playing field, but they're taking a, a micro perspective and trying to balance it out as even with a macro reality. That's not what's going on here. You can't take a micro perspective and think that it's going to hold water against a macro reality. Of course, there are impoverished so-called white people, but that has nothing to do with the fact that so-called white people are privileged in comparison, in general, against the masses of people around the world. Literal history books have been written and designed to protect those people, to erase history. Now, did you as an individual write that history book? Of course not. But was that history book created? Yes. Was that damage done? Yes. That's what we're talking about. So for people who are getting in their feelings for even bringing this information up, check yourself and realize that you're talking about something that has nothing to do with you on a micro perspective. This is a macro reality. So those most privileged by this system of dominance, of control, they're gonna be the ones in general who are going to hold on to this system. This is why the so-called free world, the United States, is the most heavily mind controlled because it's built up of mostly so-called white people who love this system. They can't let it go because they're privileged and they believe that their privilege, their standing, their stature, in comparison to the third world nations around the world, they love that shit. They think it's a part, they've bought completely into the idea that it's a process of Darwinian evolution and that's the way the world should be. They are in poverty because they are not like us. That's what they believe. This is why I say when you address things or speak in reference to subjects like so-called flat earth, it's best to approach that idea from the perspective of mind control and then go into other mind controls that are still alive and well and holding up that mind control. A lot of people can't look in the idea of flat earth because they can't let go of their belief and their trust in the education system. It's the same thing that goes for the vaccine. They can't entertain the idea that the government, that the system would hurt them, would harm them. They can't entertain that. So they'll take the vaccine. Same with 9-11. Same thing. You mean our government would harm their own people to go to war and get money for years and years and stay in a war? Where they're fighting an invisible enemy that they could just continue funneling money into this invisible war forever? Constantly getting paid? They wouldn't do that. No. We should just go to war and 
do whatever they say. You mean they would funnel money into this virus fighting epidemic just for money? No, they wouldn't do that. Let's just get the vaccine. They wouldn't lie to us about climate change. Look how horrible this is. It's <laughs> Let's support climate change. Look, Leonardo DiCaprio and Jennifer Lawrence and Jonah Hill and Meryl Streep, they're all behind climate change. Those people wouldn't lie to us. Look how likable they are. Let's support what they support. And if you don't, something's wrong with you. <laughs> and then that makes you vest into the system. It makes you think that the system is for you. And then on top of that, behind the scenes or in the side scenes, you have the New Age community, the spiritual community that doubles down on the love and the progress and the evolution of humanity. When you have people like Oprah, who's involved with politicians, and people like Eckhart Tolle and Deepak Chopra, when you have those people intermingling with Hollywood and politics and the education system, it's one big superpower. It's one big, like, transformer that comes together as one super system. And then you can't help but follow the program. And you have people in the New Age community who are selling you the ideas from observing those systems who are, in a sideways, making you believe that the system is still good in some kind of way. These are your Joe Rogans who still believes, who avoids the crimes of colonialism because he's so America. Everybody that's in that America building, that, that America system, that they're actually doing more harm than any good. I just watched a We Are Change video just last night where the guy was, you know, talking about presidents, the last two presidents who have, you know, really destroyed our country. <laughs> the systems of our country have been tanked in the last two presidents and so on and so forth. Like, that's no different than Make America Great Again. That's the same sentiment. It's the idea that America was ever great. Did the last two presidents really fucking, like, make this system what it is? Of course not. It was built this way. It was built to run exactly the way it's running. So people who are focusing your energy on the idea that the last two presidents are... They are distractions. They are part of the problem. They're designed to make you vest more energy, more trust into the system. And like I said... Most of these channels, most of these individuals are aware of this corruption, but they're so privileged in this system that they can't let it go. So they end up protecting this system and having the illusion, making it seem like they're going against it because they're only going against one chapter of a book of mind control. And since people haven't even read the whole book, they believe the intelligence of somebody who's very well versed in the idea of one chapter. So they follow the chapter. They follow these different individuals who are very well versed in one chapter of what's going on, but they don't put the whole pieces together. So they can't see the whole book. The New Age community is just like this. They're just reading one, one chapter of love and light. Okay, I lived in fear and darkness and self-destruction for so long. I just want to be better. So here's a world of love and light. Boom. Entered in Ralph Smart and Russell Brand and, and just listen to those videos and watch those people every day. Read their books all the time and keep yourself in that bubble of positivity and forward progress and love and light. And, and that's all you need to do. You're an evolved. You're awakened. <laughs> you woke up. You're woke. That's it. Meanwhile, the system is still expanding itself and running rampant around the world while you're sitting in this ball of forward progress. And to maintain that idea of forward progress, these, these phrases are just sold to you over and over again. I just heard you know, Ralph Smart in this, one of these latest videos say, fear is the only way they can control you. Really? Is that it? Is that the only way? Fear is the only way that they can control you? Of course not. Fear is one of the main ways that they can control you. It's probably one of the most powerful ways, but by no means is it the only way that they can control you. 
Because like I've said in my videos, the main way that they're getting ready to control you now, since fear is subsiding, they're controlling people with this idea of love. They're controlling people with this idea of forward progress and evolution and intelligence, so-called science. This is another way of controlling you. Fear is intertwined into some of those subjects like science and so on and so forth. But the new age community, with the support of big government and big tech, is another form of control. Taking love, funneling it through the new age mindset, and packaging it with the stamp of big tech and big government is a way that you can be controlled. But you have these people, these talking heads like Ralph Smart out there who just want to sell you something. They have to keep you in a bubble of mind controlling yourself. So just as so-called white people are in this state of privilege in the first world, in the United States, you have New Agers, spiritualists, who are privileged in that reality. So just as so-called white people can't look at certain things, certain parts of the stories, the same thing goes for so-called spiritual people, new age people. They can't look at other parts of the story because they're privileged. They're spiritually privileged. And anything that challenges that privilege is a threat to their livelihood. And when I bring this up, is this me saying like, oh, yeah, all spirituality, all that? No. Is there two separate things? There's the finite and then there's the infinite or infinite. There's the micro and the macro. There's a balance there, just like the masculine and the feminine. There's a compatibility between the masculine and the feminine. There's a compatibility within and between the finite and the infinite. The problem comes when you focus and glorify one over the other or at the expense of another, glorifying the systems of mind control. Every privilege that you have within that system is glorifying the micro at the expense of the macro. This is why they have to sell you this artificial macro to have an artificial balance. The artificial macro of we're one, we're all love, we need to come together as humanity because they are heavily vested in the idea of the micro. They can't seem imbalanced like an individual. They can't be portrayed as imbalanced in reality. Because the idea of the American dream and the way the first world runs is completely narcissistic and completely egotistical. So, you know, what, what are we going to do about that? The people are going to think that we're narcissists and that we're egomaniacal maniacs. They, we have to do something. Okay, well, let's just uh, say that we care about climate change. Yeah, that's a good one. We care about Earth. Okay, and uh, we want to venture out into space and. Uh, discover the the what's out there beyond. Yeah, yeah, cool, okay. And uh, we want to evolve the intelligence of the people with uh, expanding our technology. Ooh, that's a good one because we can make money off of that, and then people can just buy into it. We could just upgrade every day. Yeah, good job, John. We could just keep going with that. Yeah. And uh, let's see. Um, we'll make it seem like we're getting better with race relations because you know we have to deal with that whole thing because you know we use that system back in the day of controlling people by making them think that they were savage and we were better than them so we have to kind of clean that up yeah okay good so uh we'll put something out there like uh, uh we'll, we'll call it black lives matter yeah good one yeah because it makes it focus on them like like uh like it's all about them yeah and we care about them yeah and then we can have all our friends out there and they can look a certain way. Let's give him a, a, a black president too. Ooh, that's really good. But he'll only work for us. But because they'll just buy into whatever he's saying. They don't really care. They just want the, they just want the look of a black president. Yeah, that's a good idea. On and on and on. Selling you more and more parts of this system in pieces. Making people focus and attach themselves to either one or the other, the micro or the macro. And this is the thing. The majority of the people are caught up in one or the other, the micro or the macro. It's easy to get people consumed in the micro when you have the reproduction program locked in. 
when they have their resources locked in to control. You can't care for your family. You can't. This is how love is used as a manipula- manipulation program, responsibility, and so on and so forth. You can't care for your family in this first world without having some kind of resources, and these resources are tied up into their control. So this is how you lock most of the people. This is how you keep people from even going into thinking about the system because they can't think about the system that they are fully vested into. So they have to provide for their family. They can't think about the corruption of that system that provides for their family because their family, it comes first. So they have to vest their entire interest in the micro, in the providing of that individual family at the expense of the macro. And they have to do the same thing for their children. So they will institutionalize their children, mind control their children, because they see that as providing for them, making them safe. Because when they grow up, they will have to do the same thing if they have kids or if they want to be functional in society. So they pass those mind controls on, that micro mind control down the generations. That takes care of the majority of the masses of people because you have them in their lower bodies constantly reproducing, constantly having the urge and addiction, and then obviously they're mind controlled with the sexualization pumped through the mainstream media, through Hollywood, through previous generations, constantly selling you that locking of the micro and then you only have a small percentage of people with an idea of the macro how all of these systems work together and the majority of them are locked into a false version of the macro with bigger programs like climate change the new age community black lives matter you have macro story, you have macro nets that are designed to catch people who leave the micro, who want to get into the conversation of the macro. You have them, you have nets available for them to get caught in. And that's going to lock in the majority of the macro. And then before you know it, you're left with a fraction of a fraction of people who are even able to conceive of a macro, let alone being able to intellectually think about the macro and in an even smaller percentage of people a percentage of that percentage who are going to be able to see both the macro and the micro and how they are interconnected and then beyond that an even smaller percentage of people who are going to see how both the macro and the micro are being used to manipulate the masses of people Because uh, another trap is when people get in to see the micro and the macro, the trap that's there is the new age community. It's like, oh, I see this and I see that. And then they're in this space. They feel free. They feel like they can breathe now so they can let go of certain things. And once you get in that space, it's hard to get out because you don't want to leave that space. You're, You're comfortable. You feel good. You're like a new person. So boom, here's the new age community. And once you're locked into that space, you become a new person. And who wants to leave that? Basically, you got to start all over again. You got to let go of all that shit. You can't let that go a lot of the times because you you just left a space of vulnerability. You don't want to leave that. You don't want to risk that. And then on top of that, you don't want to be on the wrong. You don't want to do the wrong thing. How could you even think that the idea of love and light could be manipulated to work against you? What? How could you do that? Love and light? How could you, how could that be a weapon? How could evolution be a weapon? (laughs) How could caring for the climate and nature be a weapon? You know what? Why? That's absurd. No, see, it's down to a fraction of a fraction. So people who are Tuning into these perspectives, take that into account. I have difficulty sometimes even seeing that perspective because there's a lot of weight. You can't really go to those perspectives because there's so much weight in even entertaining these perspectives. So you have to have an an unattachment to it. You have to, you know, detach yourself from the weight of those perspectives. 
You can't carry it. It's not something that you can physically carry. It's not meant for that. And that's a dance that needs to be constantly, it's like a muscle that needs to be constantly worked out because it, you're, you're, you're dancing between the conscious and the subconscious, the micro and the macro. And it's something that's always changing and evolving. And if you don't change and evolve and work that muscle with it, you'll start to carry things that are not meant to be carried. And some things can be too heavy. So if you're in that space, make sure you remind yourself or you have somebody that can remind you that where you are is a rare space. And it takes a lot of work and a lot of energy to be dealing with that space. So go a little lighter on yourself. And like I said, in reference to like some of the downfalls of the New Age community where this weight kind of builds up is because they're selling you pieces of something that's undisassemblable. This is the thing. This is the problem with the New Age community. They're selling you this idea of the, of the macro from a micro perspective. The, the, the New Age community perspective on the macro is an oxymoron. You can't sell pieces. This is like the chapters I said, the chapters of the book of the undisassemblable. <laughs> You can't really go into reading and being that book if you're only focusing on one chapter. The micro is part of the macro. The, the spirituality within the micro is part of the macro. So dismissing storylines within the micro, which happens heavily in the New Age community, should be a red flag for people who are still holding on to the New Age community. Racism and the system of racism, white supremacy, culture, all this stuff that has been destroyed, the land that has been stolen, all those storylines connected to that micro storyline, there's some heavy spirituality in that. There's some heavy macro in that. So a red flag should be seen when you have new age communities who are dismissing those perspectives, which happens often. So like I said, these individual spiritual teachers and gurus and entertainers, spiritual entertainers, they have to sell you pieces of something that is not disconnected. And that, in that, selling you a piece of something that is undisassemblable, that is where the problems start to occur. That's where the weight starts to accrue. Because when you take that piece off, you have to hold on to it. You have to validate it for yourself. You have to constantly reinforce that that peace is something that you can hold on to. This is what these Ralph Smart videos are every day. These Russell Brand videos every day. Constantly going into that space. You're taking a piece of something, holding it, working out with that little piece, and then you think that's it. But you're only working one little muscle here and there. And the overall muscle that is your experience, your perception of this experience overall, it's a muscle that becomes atrophied after a while because it's not being worked because you're too focused on a micro version of the macro perspective. That's why I said in previous videos that the way I go into when I speak on the re when I reference spirituality and speak on the stuff that's in that, it's not to undermine it's not to dismiss spirituality it's just to acknowledge that spirituality in itself is a micro because the macro in that perspective can't be touched it can't be named it can't be like i said it's a contradiction in itself it's an it's an attempt to simplify something that is infinitely complex so when you're in that world, you're really just in the world of entertaining yourself. And that entertainment starts to add up as weight. So the micro and the macro is like the relationship between the masculine and the feminine. The math and the straight lines don't discredit the art and the curves. Just as the art and the curves don't discredit or undermine the math and the straight lines. They're existing, they're cohabitating within this reality it's the infrastructure of this reality but to name first of all it's counterproductive to focus on like i said it's it's counterproductive to even focus on one or the other these people who are jacked up on you know feminism this this crazy political version of feminism 
they're doing that at the expense of the relationship between the masculine and the feminine. Because largely, the modern feminism is in response to an overly masculine, and not even masculine. It's a it's even a fraction of real masculinity. This patriarchal system, it's not even real masculinity. It's a fraction. It's a Hollywood version of what masculinity is. It's machismo at best. So feminism, modern feminism, is a reaction to a fraction of over-masculinism, which isn't real masculinity, which is really just patriarchal mind control. So the feminism that you do have that many people follow and are building their whole character around is based upon a reaction to an illusion. And then in that illusion, you have people hating men. (laughs) They hate men because of the way the TV has portrayed the system, because the system is acting as if it is the masculine representation. No, that's an illusion. So in closing, in reference to, like I've said in the previous videos, one is not to undermine the other. When I'm talking about spirituality, like like I just explained with uh, the feminine and the masculine, it's to reference the illusion. It's not to undermine the relationship between the finite and the infinite. From my perspective, the best way that I see it is that the finite human experience is like the straight line or the math to the life force that are the curves of the infinite. And it's not to put the curves in the art on a pedestal. It's only to realize that we have this finite experience in a relationship with the infinite that is that which is undefinable, undisassemblable. And since people see one or the other, or the relationship between those two, In order to feel a certain way, to glorify their ego, they have to glorify one of them. So the New Age community is glorifying the infinite and selling you this idea of spirituality and New Ageism, while the other groups of people are selling you the finite and glorifying the ego within that human experience. And overall, the majority of people are going to get caught up in one or the other. So if you find yourself in that space, if you're caught up in the one side of the infinite or the other side of the finite, reflect upon that. Could there be some detachment there? And for people who think that they are beyond that, if they're not in one or the other, if they feel like, oh, I'm I'm neither, I'm a good balance of both. Okay, well, if you are, there's still a possibility of having an attachment to that, the awareness of the two. Because once you become aware of that space, the next step is to detach even from that. Because that's another side effect that can happen from the awareness. You start to develop this attachment to that awareness. And something akin to a spiritual ego can develop from that even. Detach from that. These attachments are at the core, they're at the foundation of a lot of these diseases. And like the video I was sharing in in the beginning of this video, it's a good example of the mind control to force you into more attachment. The so-called black and brown people of the world are being in many ways subconsciously and obviously consciously pushed into this attachment to reaction, to hate. To keep us in a reactive space, because because when you're in that reactive space, you maintain the space of what you're reacting to. It validates their position. We have to be able to let that go. And we have to start thinking of better ways to let these things go. And from my perspective, the best way that I've seen to let things go is to become more aware of them. Because if you're unaware of parts of these systems that are out there, those pieces that you're not unaware of will have lingering attachments. So if you have a good awareness of the conscious attachments that you have and are letting, go, letting them go, keep an eye out and start researching deeper some of these subconscious attachments that are still there. And start chipping away 
and letting those go.